Hey, gangway everyone, the insects are on the move. The fastest butterfly to flutter around is the skipper. These creatures can achieve speeds of up to 37 miles per hour and have some excellent quick reflexes. And speeding next to it is a fully grown horse. Not a horsefly, but a horse. It's galloping next to the skipper at the same speed. A cute little ladybug is in the way. Move, or you get trampled. The horse is getting closer, but the ladybug lifts off and flies right next to them, overtaking both the skipper and horse. Then it decides to land on the horse's head for the rest of the race. Even though ladybugs can fly at a maximum speed of around 37 miles per hour, they usually remain in the air for a couple of minutes. They can even fly as high as 3,600 feet in altitude. The horse is in the lead now. The skipper decides to land right on the horse's head next to the ladybug. It sticks its head to the tip of the horse's snout, automatically taking the lead. Hey, that's cheating! The desert floor is scorching under the burning sun. No wonder the Saharan silver ant is the fastest on Earth. It can even lift hundreds of times its own weight. If Usain Bolt, the fastest man on Earth, can run 4 strides per second, this tiny ant can run 50. If you look closely, you can even see its tiny legs gallop at high speeds. It reaches speeds of 2 miles per hour, which may not seem like anything if you're a giant human glancing from above. But down below, they're the speed leaders of the ant world. Out of nowhere, another bug sprints right by it, leaving a dust storm behind. It's the Australian tiger beetle, and it's one of the fastest land insects on Earth. And it can run at more than 4 miles per hour. Some beetles of the same species are even faster and run at around 6 miles per hour. Don't worry about its wings, they're just for decoration. It doesn't even fly. (laughs) It doesn't need to. Yikes! A cockroach! These creatures can run up to 3 miles per hour. A little house mouse pops out of a corner and starts chasing the roach. These little critters can run up to 8 miles per hour. But the roach drifts and slides and creeps into little corners to outrun the mouse. A kitty cat leaps from the shelf and joins the chase reaching 30 miles per hour. The cockroach and the mouse sneak escape outside. The cat goes back to licking itself and plotting against everyone. Centipedes don't have a hundred legs, but they're still pretty creepy and rather fast. Millipedes, however, are really slow and don't even qualify for this race. Centipedes are carnivores and use venom to help catch prey, while millipedes feed on leftovers, plants, and veggies. When in danger, they just curl up into a ball. The centipede crawls ahead, thinking it's winning the race. The millipede rolls down the hill and overtakes the centipede. It passes the cockroach, who's still getting chased by the mouse. The downhill ends with a ramp, so the millipede rolls down and bounces up into the sky. A dragonfly can hit the 35-mile-per-hour mark flying, but the millipede soars past. A hawk moth flies through and catches up to the dragonfly. It can fly at the same speed. But the dragonfly overtakes it. They reach the forest and are zigzagging through the branches and leaves. They're both flying like alien ships in outer space, dodging all obstacles. The millipede lands on a tree branch and continues walking. A tiger moth caterpillar moves ahead of it at 3 miles per hour. The millipede curls up into a ball and hides out for the rest of the race. But the branch it landed on is moving. It's actually a stick insect. And even though they can't run fast, they can grow about 13 inches long. Underneath it, there's a fairy fly, which is considered to be the smallest insect in the world, being only 0.005 inches in size. That's even smaller than a mustard seed. It sprints on the tree branch and tries to outrun the stick insect. The dragonfly and the hawk moth are head-to-head. It's almost impossible to spot them in the thick forest, but the fastest animal on Earth swifts past them all at almost lightning speed. A bumblebee can fly at 33 miles per hour and flap its wings around 200 times per second. The honeybee can fly at 20 miles per hour and flap its wings up to 230 times per second. They speed through the flowers. The millipede is still curled up hiding next to a couple of leaves and branches. The bumblebee takes the lead and is almost at the end of the field. But a giant Asian hornet pops out of nowhere and chases it back to the start. A giant Asian hornet can fly up to 25 miles per hour and is pretty aggressive. It starts gaining on it, but a bat appears out of thin air and swoops down on it, scaring it away. 
The horse with the skipper and ladybug run right next to the bees and they start flying down a hill. Out of nowhere, the millipede starts rolling down past the horse and lands on a log floating in the middle of a lake. On the surface are thousands of tiny water striders that can reach speeds up to 100 body lengths per second. If a 6-foot person were swimming, it could cover around 400 miles in an hour. Some frogs start chasing the water striders and easily pass them. A goliath frog can weigh up to 7 pounds and jump as far as 10 feet forward. Some freshwater crabs swim quite slowly, but use their little legs to move from one rock to another. A swimming whirligig beetle tries to escape from the frogs paddling at an impressive 3 miles per hour. These tiny bugs have natural paddle-shaped feet in the middle and hind legs. A bunch of grasshoppers get startled and fly away. They're actually flyers, but their powerful legs give them the height they need instead of taking off from the ground. When in the air, they can reach speeds up to 8 miles per hour. They're on par with the house mouse, which has finally overtaken the cockroach. A flea isn't much of a sprinter, but it can hop its own body size by a lot. If humans could jump like fleas, then we'd be able to jump to the Empire State Building, which is 1,450 feet high, including its antenna. It wins the title for highest hopper around with the relative size. A mosquito can fly as fast as 1 mile per hour, while a typical housefly can reach 5. The housefly swifts past the mosquitoes and takes the lead to bother and buzz around you. But a bigger superfly horsefly flies by at 90 miles per hour. It outflies the housefly and mosquito and starts doing laps around them. Tiny mites are no bigger than a sesame seed, but they can run 322 body lengths per second. To put that into human perspective, it's the equivalent of someone running around 1,300 miles per hour. It zips through the whole race and has been running with everyone since the beginning, but we couldn't see it. The horse keeps running and ends up near traffic, miles away from the finish line. Is a giant house spider that can run at 1.2 miles per hour. A big Texas brown tarantula can be pretty speedy, depending on the temperature. The cooler it is, the slower but more stable they walk. When the temperature increases, they run faster but less coordinated. These hairy beasts are around 2 inches long and move about 4 body lengths per second at 62 degrees, and 10 body lengths when it's hotter. Most insects are right at the end of the race. The horsefly and the bat are head-to-head, but the hornet is catching up. The tiger beetle on the ground is lightning speed away. They're close to the finish line. The frog leaps in front and almost catches up with the rest. A surprise swoop from the dragonfly and hawk moth overtakes the hornet. It's too hard to tell, but the millipede rolls past everyone and claims the gold. Make way, everyone! The flying fish leaps out of the water and flaps its little fins that look like wings. They don't actually fly, but it sounds better than leaping fish. These birds of the ocean can reach speeds of 37 miles per hour underwater and can soar through the air between 650 feet to 1,300 feet. They use this technique to outrun or outfly predators by gaining a lot of momentum underwater and preparing themselves at an angle for takeoff. The fish then wiggles its tail rapidly and shoots to the surface. And while in the air, it continues to wiggle its tail to gain extra distance before returning to the ocean. And it's a good thing it did so this time, because a great white shark just popped out of nowhere and is hungry for anything. These beasts can go as fast as 25 miles per hour, even though the average is around 15 miles per hour. They're considered to be the largest predatory fish on the planet and have 300 razor-sharp teeth in multiple rows. They can grow almost as large as a school bus and use their excellent sense of smell to find the closest meal. We can't tell what it was chasing before, but now it smells the flying fish and starts chasing it. The flying fish can definitely outswim the great white, but size-wise, the shark is gaining on the little flying fish. It leaps out of the water and soars through the air, but the shark also leaps out and tries to catch the fish, missing it by a thread. The flying fish manages to escape. Underneath it is an octopus. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, there we go. Their pigment cells and specialized muscles in their skin can alter and match their surroundings. They change color and can even resemble different textures. 
These creatures can also go up to 25 miles per hour by using a technique called jet propulsion. They pump in water into their sack and quickly shoot it out through a tube called a siphon. The great white jets past it without noticing it at first, but then it smells the octopus, even though it's camouflaged. The octopus tries to swim away, but given the size of the shark, there's no way it can outswim it. Not even skin changing is working. The only way to escape being a meal is by latching onto the belly of the shark. The great white continues the race with its plus one. The Atlantic bluefin tuna can grow taller than the average human, and it's one of the fastest fish in the world. It sees the great white gaining and torpedoes its way ahead. It can travel as fast as 43 miles per hour by retracting its fins to reduce drag. And out of nowhere, the blue marlin overtakes it and claims the lead. It swims at a whopping 50 miles an hour and isn't even considered to be the biggest among other marlin species. The bluefin tuna just can't keep up. The wahoo swifts by, leaving a trail of bubbles for the tuna. These fish can go up to 48 miles per hour and are even smaller than the marlin and tuna. They have large mouths and snouts as long as their actual head. It catches up with the blue marlin and now they go head to head with each other. They reach an underwater cave and swim through the rocks and tunnels. They manage to zigzag through it, eventually getting out to the other side. And above them is a humpback whale cruising at three miles per hour, even though they can shift gears to 17 miles per hour. Their pectoral fins alone can grow up to 16 feet in length. All the fish manage to outswim it, including the great white, but the humpback doesn't seem like it wants to be part of the race. These fish seem lost and don't belong in the middle of the ocean. A blue tang and clownfish reside in coral reefs and feed off the environment there. The blue tang is a much faster swimmer, unlike the clownfish, which usually sticks to its anemone home. They swim only as far as four inches from their shelter. Gee, I wonder what they're looking for. I guess I Nemo information. <laughs> Thanks, folks. I'm here all week. Try the fish. Stingrays can reach 30 miles an hour, on par with an orca. They're head to head with each other. And just like great whites, orcas are at the top of the food chain. The stingray is more agile than the orca, so it can wiggle around certain obstacles the orca can't. But no need, since the orca just breaks through all of them and takes the lead. Something huge is looming. No, it's not the great white, nor the humpback whale. It's twice the size of a great white. Cruising at 11 miles per hour, the Megalodon arrives to the scene, showing off all those teeth. All the animals swim away in fear. The fastest boat to ever touch the waters was the Spirit of Australia. The people inside notice the Meg and speed away at 317 miles per hour. And right behind them is the Bluebird K7 going at 276 miles an hour. There's no contest here. A seagull can fly at a speed of 17 miles per hour. It notices the flying fish near the surface and tries to swoop in and catch it. The flying fish manages to fly a little higher and lands in a bucket of water on the boat, taking the lead in the race. The seagull sees the megalodon and flies away. Meanwhile, the sailfish is sailing through the ocean at 68 miles per hour, being the fastest fish out there, including the speed in the air. It swifts past all the other fish and takes the lead, even though it's miles away from the boats. It swims past the bluefin tuna and marlin and does circles around the great white. The clownfish and blue tang are still in the middle of the ocean, trying to figure out where to go. Uh, Australia is that way, guys. A pilot whale and a barracuda are fin to fin, dodging everything in their way. A pilot whale can hit the 20 mile per hour mark while the barracuda does 27 miles per hour and grows up to 60 inches long. They catch up with the great white and manage to swim past it. The Meg is gaining on them, but something even bigger is just at the horizon. All the fish can sense it and push even further. A hurricane is gaining momentum and blowing everything out of the water. The winds toss the great white and tuna in front of the boats and take the lead. A hurricane can reach speeds past 200 miles an hour. It starts moving and destroying everything in its way. But the winds give the rest of the marine contenders an extra boost in speed. They're going even faster than before. 
The mag takes the lead. The seagull reached the boat and is chilling inside to avoid the storm. Meanwhile, a bunch of sea lions are hanging out by a rock. They see a wave coming and make a break for it. They can travel up to 14 miles per hour and are masters at holding their breath. They have the advantage of a head start. They're a lot faster than emperor penguins who swim at speeds of up to five miles an hour. The Meg and the Great White are head to head while the humpback whale is still cruising by. The bluefin tuna and the marlin can't seem to get past each other and might share their position. The stingray lags behind them but still manages to keep up with the rest. The orca pushes everyone around and tries to be the first. The blue tang and clownfish are out of the race since they weren't really in the race to begin with. The storm blows past everyone and takes the lead. All the animals are disoriented but continue on with the race. The storm is catching up with the boats that are still harboring the flying fish and the seagull. The bird stands on the tip of the boat and points its beak forward to be the cheating champion. But the storm moves over them and scatters them in all different directions. They're all out of the race. It's hard to tell, but the winner is the Great White, and the sailfish comes second. But the octopus had been hanging on to the Great White this whole time, and just changed back to its original color. Looks like the Great White will have to share the pedestal with the octopus. Great race, guys! So, it's a hot summer day, you're outdoors enjoying the weather. You want to lie on the cool grass somewhere in the shade just to relax, but ew, looks like someone spat there, but it's actually a spittlebug's house. These guys sip a lot of watery sap from the plants, and when they process it, it forms a lot of bubbles, not less than 150 times their body mass daily. All these bubbles form a cocoon where young insects can grow safely. No bird or animal wants to eat this cocoon because it tastes bitter, as if you licked a Nintendo cartridge. Not so fast, Cheetah! Apparently, Dracula Ant is the world's fastest animal and the vampires in the ant world. They definitely win any burger-eating contest, since they're able to snap their jaws 5,000 times faster than your eye can blink. To understand how fast the Dracula ant is, you gotta make a video of his jaws chomping at 480,000 frames per second. At this speed, you'll see the ant slowly moving its mandibles. They don't run, but their mouths are rapid, and they move those jaws so fast, they even bend while snapping together. Now people can do that too, snapping our fingers so that they bend. The darkest animal out there is the IM-70 chicken. Not only these guys have black feathers, eyes, and claws, they also have black bones. The color is bluish black, and it is deep. If you ever try those chicken wings, they'll look as if someone had marinated them in blackberry juice or squid ink. They say Marco Polo was the first to have discovered these odd or charming roosters. Back in 1298, the explorer wrote about a breed of chickens that were as black as cats and laid the best eggs. This freshwater fish has been around since the beginning of the 20th century and probably remembers good old times with black and white and even silent movies. One big mouth buffalo made it till 112 years old. Still, the world's oldest creatures live in the sea. There are deep sea sponges that are 11,000 years old and they're safe and sound. This fish has incredible gills, which lets it hold its breath for over four minutes. Meet the coffin fish, a weird looking but tough animal. They're also famous as sea toads. They actually look much more like toads, not classic fish with fins and scales. They can also inflate because of the seawater they gulp, so they expand just like a balloon. In fact, this super ability lets this fish hold its breath for several minutes because they actually get the oxygen from the water they keep inside. But the absolute champion is the human. The world's champion can survive holding the breath for over 20 minutes. There are some animals that make their own clothes. Sponge crabs make a sort of hat from sponges to protect them from underwater bad guys. To figure out how the crabs decided on their outfit, researchers gave them some foam sponges that were different in sizes. The bigger the crab is, the bigger the sponge it chooses. They use various techniques to get this perfect shape, starting from cutting out a small hole for the head, and then they see if the size fits them. If they're good to go, 
they continue to cut and dig into that sponge until it becomes a perfect hat. Recently, researchers have spotted a moth that would drink birds' tears while they sleep. So far, there were only three registered cases of animals feeding on other animals' tears. These were some Amazon butterflies, solitary bees, and moths. Their regular diet mostly includes nectar, but it does lack essential salts that aren't that easy to find elsewhere. Not only do they drink birds' tears, they also drink turtles' tears, crocodiles' tears, and those of many mammals found in the Amazon jungle. Really? Crocodile tears? Some sea dwellers can emit red light. For example, the stoplight loose jaw fish uses it to catch dinner. Shrimps don't see the red light, so the loose jaw fish can spot any red shrimp emitting pulses of red light and catches it without scaring the dinner away. Mammals can glow too. A flying squirrel glows under UV light, emitting pink light. It happens because they're able to absorb light and emit it back in another wavelength. The platypus may not have the largest cheek pouches, but they're definitely the weirdest. They keep gravel inside those pouches to help mash the food they normally eat. Worms, shellfish, snails. These guys are toothless, so gravel comes in handy when it comes to chewing the food. It works just like a blender. Ooh, makes you wonder what they use for the mouthwash, huh? Now, if humans had the same incredible cheeks just like chipmunks have, we'd be able to transport our groceries right in our mouths. In fact, chipmunks can transport something as large as themselves in their oversized mouth luggage sections. Hamsters have the same superpower, too, and can even carry their young in the mouth in case of the need to run away. A baby carrot, which seems tiny for a human but significantly large for a hamster, can disappear without a trace in between those huge cheeks. The Mariana snailfish, which logically lives in the Mariana Trench, is relatively small. It's as large as two medium candy bars. Despite the size, they can easily withstand the pressure that equals 1,600 elephants standing on it. This fish has a unique body structure. For example, it has some gaps in the skull. If their skull was uniform and had no holes, it would never withstand the pressure in the depths of the Mariana Trench. Plus, their cartilage skeleton is soft and flexible. They also have no actual eyes, but they really don't need them since they live in complete darkness in the world's deepest trench. Hey, meet the Pinocchio frog. Not hard to guess, their nose can grow in size in the blink of an eye in various situations. Whenever they feel danger coming, it gets larger. When these frogs are calm and feel safe, it goes back to normal. It may also elongate when they want to attract mates, and probably when they croak a lot. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Do you enjoy it when it rains? You probably grab a cup of hot chocolate, cover yourself up with a blanket, and sit on the windowsill, looking at the drops dripping down the window. If you like it, you're definitely not a Myanmar snub-nosed monkey that's been recently discovered, guess where, in Myanmar. Their nostrils are so upturned and exposed to the outer world that they sneeze every time it rains. But if you were in a choir, you have something in common. Snub-nosed monkeys like singing together. Amazon Pink River Dolphins aren't born pink. Their young are always gray, but the older they get, the pinker they turn. It's like people having wrinkles when they age, and these guys simply get a different color. Hey, i like to get a little pink instead of those smile lines. You'd certainly love to be a termite because of their crazy sleep schedule. They actually never sleep, and the only thing they do is nibble on the wooden pegs they see around them. Well, if you're afraid of gaining weight because of a cellulose-rich diet, you could probably turn into a snail. They get a power nap for some hours and then can run without sleep for as long as 30 hours in a row. No fish can survive for any significant period of time without water, except this one. The African lungfish. When they feel something's wrong, they start secreting a mucus cocoon and go underground, give or take 9 inches under the soil. They have a built-in tube to breathe. Mountain stoneweeders, native to New Zealand, aren't afraid of drastic temperature changes. Their blood contains a special protein that doesn't let their blood crystallize in case of extreme temperatures. 
they tolerate any cold better than polar bears and even penguins, who live in the officially world's coldest place, Antarctica. Ring-tailed lemurs have one of the craziest ways of conflict resolution. They have stink fights. Taking into account the average number of lemurs in a group, about 20 or 30 animals, you'll see there's a lot of competition. Their scent glands are on their wrists and shoulders. Those on the wrists are harmless. The odor they produce is quite volatile. Those on the shoulders are nasty and produce brown, funky-smelling paste that would outlast any perfume. So back off! 